and welcome back to The Source. I'm Natalie Fee and as part of the show this evening we're looking ahead to what's happening at the weekend and here in Bristol it is all about the Slapstick Festival which is what tonight's show has been all about. But first of all let's head over to the Tobacco Factory where Kate Dimbleby's show opens this weekend. Well along comes a motorcycle very much to my surprise I said officer was I speeding I couldn't see his eyes he said no you weren't speeding and he felt where his gun was hung he said lady you were screaming at the top of your lung and you were doing it alone you were doing it alone you were screaming in your car in a 20 mile zone you were doing it alone you were doing it alone you were screaming you were doing it alone you were doing it alone you were screaming in your car in a 20 mile zone you were doing it alone you were doing it alone you were screaming Opening at the Tobacco Factory Theatres this weekend is Who is Dory Previn by the lovely Kate Dimbleby. Hello, Kate. Hello. Thanks for being on the show. It's very nice to be here. So my first question, I'm not going to ask who is Dory Previn. First of all, who is Kate Dimbleby? <laughs> it's a question I've been trying to answer for quite a few yes. years now. Yes. Um, There's a I'm whole religious thing around that, <laughs> who am I thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm a singer and performer. Um, uh, I now live in Bristol. Um, but I've been performing cabaret shows and theatre shows for about the past 20 years, wow. focusing a lot on women and women's stories. Um, and as I've got older, those stories have grown with me. And that's how I came to Dory Previn, really, mm. was um, I discovered her and just felt this is, this is a woman whose songs and stories need to be sung out to the world. And what about some of your early inspirations? So obviously, I mean, that's a, a lovely, long, rich career, but have been inspired by women. Sometimes we, we can be quite short of those role models. Who inspired you? Well, I grew up, my mother was a jazz fanatic. And so I grew up listening to all the big band greats. and. Early influences were people like Peggy Lee, um, who I in fact did a show about and I toured a show about her life, um, and Fats Waller and, you know, just wonderful, that sort of classic era of music. Mm. And I think, I, I think I'm an old-fashioned girl at heart, really, and, and so I always identified with those women. And like you say, in the pop world, I didn't have, there weren't quite the same kind of models. Mm. So you said you'd done, you, you've done a show about Peggy Lee, um, but you've also done the, your, this current show, you're just back from New York um, with Who is Dory Previn? Yes. Now, I don't know who Dory Previn is, so who is Dory Previn? Um, well, some people will recognise the name yeah. because Previn um, is obviously the surname Andre, Andre Previn, who is a famous pianist and composer, and Dory Previn was married to Andre. They were okay. a kind of top songwriting team in the 1950s and 60s. Um, they were nominated for Oscars that, for the soundtracks that they wrote. Um, very glitzy and part of the story is conjuring up that era of you know all those wonderful women on the silver screen mm -hmm. and um, what then happened was that uh, Andre famously left Dory for Mia Farrow, oh. a lemon-haired lady who Dory writes a song about um, in, in sort of revenge really um, and it was one of those things that at the time it was probably as big if Brad and Angelina split up it would be, okay, you know, if they were that big. Yeah. And um, Dory had a breakdown. Uh, she was 40 years old. Her husband had left. Her songwriting partner had left. What was she going to do? And she asked for a pen and paper. And she sat down and she wrote out autobiographical albums. And uh, they caught on and they became, she became a sort of cult hit of her time. And the kind of songs she wrote were just so... Um, uh, direct and spoke to the heart that that when I rediscovered them and, and started playing them to people everybody's reaction was the same was like who is this woman wow and you know how can I listen to more of her so that's that's how the show came about mm. and, and what can people expect from the show is it is it you are you telling her story or are you are you there performing her songs yes I we we I've always um, like to tell stories mixing songs and words so and with Dory she wrote these brilliant autobiograph autobiographies um, so we mix snippets of her autobiographies in with the songs mm. and and the songs are just this one they range from sort of jazz to 
folk to blues. There's a gospel song in there. They're very funny, a lot of them. There's one called Did Jesus Have a Baby Sister, which, <laughs> which is a bit of a dig at her Catholic childhood, but it's also saying, you know, what happened to the women yeah, in where history? Yeah, where are the ladies, you know? yeah. And, um, and then there are these really sad songs like Lady with the Braid, which was the first song I discovered, um, which is, it starts with the line, would you care to stay till sunrise? It's completely your decision. And it's this sort of idea of a woman alone inviting someone into her life and the vulnerability of that mm. at, at age 40, you know. So um, I just think I, it's sort of everyone who hears the songs and hears the story gets totally drawn in. So I'm, that's what I'm hoping. Brilliant. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Kate. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. And if you want to come along and see who is Dory Previn, then you can look on the Tobacco Factory Theatre's website and get your tickets through there. So it's happening this Friday and Saturday. Th that's right, yes. eight, eight o'clock this yes. Friday and Saturday. I'd better Come go and check it out. It's going to be absolutely <laughs> extraordinary. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank you. Great to catch up with Kate there at the Tobacco Factory. Now to end our show today, what better way to end it and to celebrate the opening of the Slapstick Festival than to be with Peter Lord, founder, co-founder of Ardman Animations. Hello, Peter. Hi, yeah. Well, very lovely to have you on the show. And I believe your first time on Made in Bristol TV? Indeed, yes. First of all, I'm sure. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure how we let three months go by without having you. <laughs> You're slacking, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely brilliant. Now, I've just watched your Seeing Double Morph and Chaz event here mm. at the Watershed. So that's part of the slapstick. So first of all, I mean, obviously, I could talk to you for probably, you know, at least an hour about your work here in Bristol. But maybe you could tell me about Ardman Animation's involvement in the Slapstick Festival. Yeah, sure. Um, so, well, we've been involved pretty well since the start. You know, we, we met Chris Daniels, the director, and um, we just met socially, you know, we met talking about things that we liked. Uh, we get on with him very well. And um, he told us about this festival that he was running pretty well single-handedly. And we just thought it was a great idea, you know, a, a, a classic Bristol idea. Because in a city like Bristol, the best things come from people with a passion and enthusiasm. And that's the case. That's just how it is. Um, you know, and probably the best things, they're not, they're not manufactured, they're not subsidised, they just grow naturally from, from the ground, so, so with slapstick. So, um, he approached us, he approached me, I think, first to get involved, and perhaps the first thing I did was talk about some Buster Keaton films, about which I knew very little at the time, <laughs> and now I'm an expert. And uh, we liked the whole thing, liked the festival, liked its tone, its feel, spirit, and enjoy the films yeah. so it's easy yeah, obvious and very much it's, it's close isn't it well it, it's it's like Ardman itself like the, the physical theatre and that hilarity yeah it, it doesn't take itself too seriously and that's what I, I get from Ardman is you know it's it's just genius and all the way back from Morph it's just, I mean it's just it's, just, it's entertainment isn't it entertainment um, the fact that Snapstick Festival celebrates well half and half and half silent comedy and maybe British comedy um, but we, but, but we do, we do silent comedy a lot of the time. Morph is silent comedy. I mean, he, he speaks a bit, mm. he has a voice, but you don't need words to understand the story. And so with Sean the Sheep, you don't need words at all to understand the story. Yeah. And I think that's a lovely thing. It's, it's a great thing, yeah. a good thing. Um, and of course, that's what the great silent comedians did, you know, so that we celebrate that. And then separately in Slapstick, another strand has always been um, a love of British comedy. You know, um, so it, it's clever because it, it kind of it, it's it does two things at the same time: celebrates the past and celebrates the yeah. the present and, and new and new talent as well. Yeah. So amazing program of events happening over really? over this weekend coming. So it's kicking off today, Thursday, the twenty second of January. Some of the highlights for you, perhaps coming up. Well, the gala in Colston Hall, I have to say, is always the highlight. Always has been, and um, they're showing a Buster Keaton film this time, which is which I mean. Who doesn't love Keaton? Yeah. We've got Rick Wakeman coming to play live, accompanying Laurel and Hardy, I think. Amazing. But um, simply, it's an easy, it's simple. 
Coastal Hall packed, packed with people, seeing a film in really good condition, well projected, you know, bright, clean print of the film with live music. It's a great event. I think, I think that a lot of people slightly undervalue silent comedy. I think because of the way they saw it when they were young or seen it in the past, they think it's just, just slapstick. You know, and so, you know, when you think slapstick, you imagine somebody getting kicked in the bum and yeah. falling over in the mud. Plank hitting them around the head and falling over. Yeah. Now, we all love that. Yeah. Of course we do. But that's, but these films, these these full-length films like the Buster Keaton film, is about far more than that. You know, it's also about char- character. Mm-hmm. It's st- storytelling. And so when you see a film like that shown properly, the joy is that the audience are all laughing at, at, together. Yeah. So you'll, you'll, you will, unless you see a, yeah, seeing the slapstick show is like seeing a great um, stand-up show. The, the, the whole room roaring with laughter at the well-told joke. Yeah, absolutely, there's nothing like it really. And That's I think, great. you know, obviously Chris Daniels and, and everyone involved has done a lot to bring that back and, and make it more more current, and especially here in Bristol, people have become mm. more aware of that. Yeah. Um, now, it was fantastic to see you today, obviously talking about Morph, and we've got Morph and Chaz here. Yeah, they are. Yeah, now, the boys. that was part of the comedy double, wasn't it, for, uh, yes. for the Slapstick Festival as a preview event? Yeah, this year, the, the, the theme for this year particularly was double acts yeah. so you know Vic and Bob Walker and Wise um, uh, Smith and Jones yeah, yeah. you know yeah. uh, and so yes this this clay double acts would have fit in yeah. Perfectly. And it was just wonderful seeing, you know, the, the range of people here from like sort of five year olds right the way through to people of from, of your own and age e- as well. And even older than me, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know it's, it's yeah. good. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's good. Well, no, it's, it's lovely. It's a huge it? part of my life as well. And you know, seeing seeing Tony Hart there and Heartbeat was, was something I watched as a child. And yes. and this little guy, you know, I never thought I'd be uh, have the chance to <laughs> sit with him Definitely. and yourself. Yeah. So obviously, well, you know, we're short on time, but we've got Sean the Sheep launching in oh, yes. two weeks' time, haven't mm-hmm. we? Well, yeah. Probably one week by the time we, we go out. Now. <laughs> yeah, the sixth of Feb is the actual official launch day. Amazing. Yes, in in cinemas, as they say. Yes. And so yeah, the Shaun the Sheep movie. It's because ha- I haven't been having had a life as a TV star, so now we've <laughs> taken him into into the movies, yeah. and um, <laughs> obviously a bigger, better story. Um, again, but like the series and like Morph, um, not dependent on language. Mm-hmm. So that was quite. Daring, really. So, an an 80-minute film, which is for families to enjoy, that doesn't use language. Oh, that's brave. But actually, I mean, when I see it, doesn't it, it doesn't occur to me that, that there are no words, mm. because because you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. The trick is, you know what everyone's thinking the whole time, and if you get that, then then you're in then you're in the story and you follow the story. Yeah, it transcends the language, doesn't it? Really. It does. And the great, and also it forces us as filmmakers to do visual jokes the whole time. So there, so that's great. You can't sort of fall back lazily on verbal comedy. Yeah. You have to think, okay, this scene I'm about to shoot, how is that visually special? How is it visually engaging? How will that make people laugh? And that's what the guys have done so well. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best with that and hopefully we can catch up with you on Made in Bristol TV around the Shaun the Sheep, Shaun the Sheep launch as well. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, sure. Peter, thank you very much for talking to us about the Slapstick Festival. Now, that is all we've got time for on the show this evening, so do stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll be focusing on our music for Music Fridays and the Slapstick Festival. It starts today. It's featured, it's at the Colston Hall, it's at the Old Vic, it's here at the Watershed. Check out the website, which is slapstick.org.uk. Stay tuned. We'll see you tomorrow again at 6.30. Thanks for watching.